Yo! Welcome back, baby! Now, Honda Street Garage already made a video about this topic or and stuff uh, surrounding this topic, but, you know, since I get a lot of comments every day on my videos, whether I'm, you know, uh, talking about boosting my car or, you know, motor, any basically, everyone seems to have a bad freaking mindset when it comes to B20s and how they're trash, how they're just the worst motor to put on your car. Don't boost the B20. You know, the sleeves are weak. Yeah, but dab but do. Now, it is my job to inform you Actually, it ain't my job, cause you know y'all only y'all y'all probably gonna click off the shit anyway. But uh, I want to talk to you guys today about you know how I feel about the B20s and why you guys need to stop bashing them because B20s aren't that bad. Disclaimer: I am not a certified Honda Tech guru. I just did a bunch of research when it came to boosting my car, running a B20 VR motor setup. I've been with B20s for like the past year and a half now. I got a bunch of research and controlled experiments on this B20 freaking debate. I right? most of what I'm about to say may not be factual. All right, this is just me. Stating how I feel about this whole thing, all right? Maybe it might have some factual information. Maybe it don't. Who knows, B? Who knows? Now, the first thing we're going to address is B20s having weak sleep. And yes, they do. Because basically it's a LS bored out to an 84 millimeter. Uh, if you don't know, LS is 81 millimeter. Same as the GSR, the B16, I believe the B16, but most B series blocks have the stock bore of 81 millimeters. The B20 are basically LS's, but bored out to 84 millimeters, but they're not basically LS's because a B20 use a monolithic cast. Basically it's one big cast design, right? That's why it's weaker. The LS's and GSR's, B16, their casts are all individual. That's why they can handle higher rpms better than the b20 the b20s as i said <laughs> are monolithic cast so it's one big cast together so that's why you can't really run a high compression b20 build unless you either you know reinforce the sleeves that's because that would be the only way you'll make the b20 last now you might get lucky enough to have a all motor build last you for years but that all really depends on your tune your setup and yeah yeah but dab but dab but now the advantage of running a b20 bottom man is you get more torque it's basically like a 24 20 if you're talking k-series because people run 24 bottom in for that torque they want a K20 head for that power. Well, high-end power. Well, depending. Well, yeah, I ain't trying to confuse myself with shit, but you get what I'm saying. Like, if you want a B20 VTEC, you have to throw, like, a GSR head on it instead of a B16. Well, you throw a B16 head on it, you can rev it up to the heaven. But if you throw a GSR head on it, you get more power out of a GSR head because there's no replacement for displacement. Why would you run a uh, 1.6 liter head on a 2.0 bottom? Instead of running the 1.8 head on the 2.0 bottom, you know, so have to maximize your power gains, baby. Now, when it comes to boosting the B20 VTEC, they say you should run ARP rod bolts. And yeah, you, I mean, you don't have to. Obviously, when you run ARP anything, it's for reassurance. Well, in case it's head studs, because, I mean, you can boost on stock head studs, but it's better to go the route of, you know, running ARP head studs. As far as ARP rod bolts go, I know a lot of, well, I don't personally know them, but I've seen a lot of builds with people running stock, completely stock B20 bottom end, uh, B20 VTEC turbos, and they last. Like, if you watch um, Honda Street Garage's video where he made a video talking about do you need ARP rod bolts and head studs to run a B20 VTEC, and this boy Charlie ran a freaking street beast B20 VTEC turbo, and to this day, it still runs. So... But that's generally what people would do if they're running like a boost build or a high compression on motor build. You want to run the ARP rod bolt so you can rev to the heavens because usually that's like the weakest point of the B20. If I'm not mistaken, one of the weakest points is the rod bolts. But, you know, B20s are like sometimes hit or misses with whatever application you're using that B24. In my personal opinion, I have nothing bad to say about the B20Bs because every B20 I had usually only failed on me because of driver error. Me not getting tuned or... Me not fishing something as simple and just driving until it blows. Cause that's been my motto for the last couple of engines I had. Drive until it blows. Now we're here. But they've never like failed me in a way of like, oh, if everything's done right and then somehow I spin a bearing or something. You know what I'm saying? Like somehow I throw a rod out the block. You know, something like that. That never really happened. Majority of people I know who ran B20s usually only have like oil pump problems where the oil pump go bad or something. It's never really about, you know, cracking sleeves or bending a rod or, you know, anything that's internal wise. No one ever seemed to have a problem with the B20. So, which 
which is why I don't understand why people talk bad about B20s. Like, I understand that, you know, they have weak cylinder walls, but if you personally never ran a B20, a correct setup B20, then what, what's the problem? Because I know a lot of people who run E85 on a stock B20, and no problems. They're beating freaking fast cars. So it's like, I don't know, man. I don't know where you guys are buying your B20s from, but, but guys out there, if you're thinking about going B20, then do it. They're really cheap. Like, if you're in Florida, you can find a low compression B20 for like 300 bucks. High compression for 400 bucks. And if you do want to run turbo on your B20, then, you know, just do it safe. Run, get quality crap. You can run an eBay kit. That's the hell up. Well, I was going to run an eBay kit, but now I got some quality in the works. But, hey, man, just make sure you do your build right. You know what I'm saying? And your B20 should be reliable as hell. They're not that bad, bro. I don't know why people talk bad about B20s. Like, and the crazy thing about it is I now built up a car following of people who, like, own Hondas and they have B20 VTEX. And they have nothing bad to say about them. Like, yeah, you might blow a motor or two depending on, like, what setup you're running. If you're running boost, like, high boost on the B20, be like, what, 15 pounds, I guess. If you're running, like, you know, somewhere around, like, more than 10 PSI and you blow it, then you'd obviously and you like the, you know, the, the walls ain't that good because it's monolithic cast. But if any of you guys out there are thinking about going B20V or just throwing a B20 in your car, do it. It's cheap. It's reliable. Once it's done right, some motors are hit or misses. Like with eBay Turbo Kits, it's a hit or miss with any motor you buy unless it's like factory rebuild or something like that. It's a hit or miss, man. Some LS motors can't outlast the B20. It's all hit or miss. But that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you want more information about B20V techs and the process of swapping one and how to do one, then I highly suggest you go to my friend's page on here his name is mark he owns honda street garage go over there check him out and you know search up honda tech you know what i'm saying get some information on honda tech or club integra baby no, like, honda tech really is like the best place to go or hondaswap.com i think it's called hondaswap.com shit i don't know thank you guys for watching if you can leave a thumbs up on this video and shout out to all the people who talk trash about b20 and as i said some of this information may be factual some of it may be not this is all personal opinion and a little bit of research and if i sign it stupid then obviously because i am i wonder what randy thinks about b20s me you be yep